good time here, and uh, I'm just grateful to be here with you guys in the middle of the week right. to get uh, what is this? To get re refueled. Okay, refueled. So let's do it. Um, you mind if I if, if we pray one more time? Sure. Let's like why don't you pray? You know, just acknowledge God because you know it's Him who we need. You know, um, it's it's Him who who feeds us. It's Him who refuels us. You know, um. We can't do it ourselves. You know, even if we think we're grown enough to feed ourselves, we need him to feed us there. Amen. 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 That's 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 the beauty, but it's also the I don't know, I feel like it's a good thing of, of being a Christian, of being a believer, because you never get to a place where you don't need the one that you needed that first day when you said, Come yeah. into my life. Amen. Amen. Right? You're like you never come into a place where you don't need him. So so let's, let's talk to him. Father, we just thank you as the body, as your children for today. Um, God, we just give you everything that uh, may have happened or is happening in our week. And we just thank you that you provide for us our daily bread. So we're, help us to not worry about yesterday. Help us to not be concerned about tomorrow. But just to thank you because you're providing our daily bread today. So we thank you that today at this moment we find ourselves in your word, in your presence, and in the middle of your grace and goodness and favor. And we just ask you to speak to us today. Remind us of truth today. Help us to be free from all the issues and troubles, circumstances of life and the world by you speaking to us by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, feed us. We need you to feed us, Spirit of God, because we cannot know anything we cannot understand anything we cannot live anything out without your presence without your help without your guidance and wisdom and power within holy spirit so we just thank you that you speak tonight and you reveal to the hearts of every believer here your truth of righteousness in jesus name amen 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 all right so did you guys hear me when i said Romans six yeah yeah uh, we're going to talk about Romans six um how many of you guys try to read daily, every other day, weekly? Most of us, all of us? Okay, let's try. Let's try because I, I got saved, I was 19, right? Some people got saved when they were maybe 15. Some people got saved when they were 30, 40, 50. Depending on what year of age you got saved in, uh, there's a lot of habits, a lot of junk in here. Um, there's a mindset, there's a belief system, right? Um, uh, uh, I guess a doctrine, right? Mm -hmm. A belief, something that you believe in, something that you respond to um, in your actions, in your words, in your feelings, in your thoughts. And uh, we've been trained, right? Uh -huh. So depending on what you guys say, like we've been believing or living like the world for so long that we gotta start getting to know the truth and you know a lot of times we forget that we were born again knowing the truth we were born again because we believed of somebody and a message that was preached to us or told to us and then we believed but that doesn't mean that we automatically get the understanding that we need to have amen so we gotta get that truth so, so try to read your word Daily, you know, I'm gonna say daily. If, if, if you can, and you know, work into it, but definitely try to get into that word, because you know, just coming Wednesday and Sunday, you know, it's not like God's gonna be like, oh, you're a bad boy. You know, you have to read every day. You're a bad girl. I'm not gonna help you. It's not about God moving or God helping. It's about Christ already came. The Holy Spirit was already sent and lives yeah. in you. But how are you going to submit to Him? How are you going to believe in him? Wow. Yeah. If this don't have his word in it, right? Amen. So so the more we look into truth, the easier we can remember truth. Mm -hmm. So that when a circumstance of the world comes at us strongly, we remember a little easier how to respond. Because we yeah. always have the free choice of response. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And the response that God gives us, we're going to read about it here. Uh, we are to respond not in carnality, but in the Spirit. Amen? Amen? All right, let's do this. Verse 1. I got New King James Version. I don't know what y'all got, but I, I think they're, you know, if we're reading a good version, a translation, they should all pretty much say the same thing, right? Okay. What shall we say?
say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Mm. Certainly not. How many, how shall we who die to sin live any longer in? Mm. Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ, Jesus were baptized into his death? Let's stop at verse 4. That's something that we got to be conscious about every single day. The person I was born as died. When I was baptized, I wasn't baptized to clean my body. That's what shadow was for. I was baptized to demonstrate the truth that happened in my life, in my heart. The fact that I died with Christ when I believed in him. And when I came up out of the water, somebody else rose up. A new creation. Ooh. All right. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death. Oh, there it goes. I should have just kept reading. See, I'm not lying. This is in the Bible. <laughs> Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him. Our old man was what? Crucified. That the body of sin might be done away with. That we should no longer be slaves of sin. Okay. Do we ever wonder if Jesus was really crucified? Do we ever think about that? Jesus, did you really get crucified? Maybe in the beginning of our walk, or maybe when things get tough. But after a while, um, you don't got to know him so much. You don't got to see so many things. You don't got to feel and experience and, 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 and see and hear so many things that line up with the word and that are just straight supernatural and kingdom that you don't, you don't want to think about that. You're like, of course he was crucified. Of course. That's why I was born in. That's why I'm in church. He was crucified. But it says you... You were crucified. The old man was crucified with him. Now that's something that we usually forget. Though, that the old us also was crucified with him. That's the key to remember. The old man died. The old man is no more. The old me is past tense. Right? 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Old things have passed away. When we do a funeral, we say... You know, we're here in the memory of so and so because they have passed away. What are we saying? Mm -hmm. ah! mm -hmm. Well, you were baptized before. Mm -hmm. You don't think we even had your funeral. Right? We already had our funeral. We died. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's the hard part of remember. We can remember that he crucified, he was crucified, but it's tough to remember that we were crucified too. Oh. Right? And, and that's the goal of, of gathering. That's the goal of reading the word daily, you know, waking up early enough, not only to do your little push-ups, not only enough to, you know, uh, do your hair, you know, for an hour and a half, but wake up early enough to read the word. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to invest in this thing because it's not going to, nothing's going to happen on its own. And we know this when it comes to the natural, but it's like, we feel like because it's spiritual, it's, we're not supposed to put no work in. You know? And, and it's true when it involves our spirit or our heart. Like, yeah, the Holy Spirit already came in us, and we're already one with Him. He already joined to our spirit. We're already sons of God in that way, in that form. And the flesh is still sinful flesh. So these things we can't change. I can't change my flesh, and I can't change my spirit. My flesh, Adam gave it to me. My spirit, Christ gave it to me. I can't change that. But what stays the same? Your mind, your soul. That's what we got to renew. Amen. Renew. So we gotta put something new to it. Understand something new that we never understood before, right? So let's get to it. Verse 7. For he who has died has been free from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Wow. So we're not on our own here. Just like Christ was really crucif uh, crucified and resurrected, we died with him. But we also come alive into new creations because of that same spirit. So, like, we're not alone. If we were crucified with him, believe me, we were also, come on, resurrected.
resurrected into newness of life by the same spirit. Right? Okay? Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more, death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, I was talking about just him right now. For the death that he died, he dies to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So it's like, okay, Jesus overcame. He overcame the world by faith. He came in sinful flesh. He was born of the virgin. He was conceived of the Holy Spirit, but had the blood, had the sinful flesh of, 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 of Mary, right? Because he was still in her womb, right? So that's why he was able to be tempted, you know? Uh, God is not tempted with evil. So how was Jesus tempted? He was God, but he had sinful flesh, right? You can only be tempted if you have sinful flesh. You never sinned, but he was tempted. So it's like this, guys. Jesus came and he already went through all of that, endured the cross, went to the cross, died, resurrected, and ascended to the right hand of the Father. Like, he's good. Like, he ain't got to deal with overcoming temptation. He ain't got to deal with, oh, Lord, if it's your will, uh, you know, take, take this cup from me. You know, let's, let's save humanity another way, Father. <sighs> no, that was temptation. Father, your will be done. Let's save them however you want to save them. I'm going to go to the cross. Yeah. That was temptation and then. He got in the spirit. Yeah, yeah I see that, right? Yeah. So, so he never said, "I'm, I'm out, I'm gone." Because if he would, if he would have, he would have sinned. He would have disobeyed. He wouldn't have done the will of the Father. But he always did the will of the Father. Yeah. So, he doesn't have to go through that no more. That's why it says, "He, he now lives to God, mm -hmm. lives for righteousness." Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So check it out. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. He don't got to do it again. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. So that's just talking about Jesus. But here goes this verse 11. Likewise. I know you guys know what that means. Likewise. Mm -hmm. Oh, now we're included. Mm -hmm. You also reckon yourselves or consider yourselves dead to, uh, to be dead indeed to sin. Mm -hmm. Wow. But alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So just like Jesus, you know, it's, 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 it's only existent to, to do the will of God, to serve God, to glorify God, to, to be obedient, to be submissive to God, to be led by the Spirit, not by the flesh. Likewise, mm -hmm. consider yourselves, come on, yeah, dead yeah. to yeah. sin. That's the mentality we got to have. Because if we forget that, then we're going to give ourselves the right Right, the right to act outside of him, his character. But we're the body of the body of what? And we can bear the fruit of the not the flesh. So we're the body of Christ, not the body of our parents. And we can bear the fruit of the spirit, not the fruit of the flesh. It's identity change. It always goes back to who are you now? You know? Let's go back. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be in dead and to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. There it goes. It's going back to what it taught us in the beginning of, of chapter 6. You are alive from the dead, and your members should be presented as instruments of righteousness to God. Amen? Amen. No, no, before you that. Okay. So, so, so it, go, it goes back to that. Wow. So when people say, come on, Nick. Come on, Alicia. Come on, guys. Come on. You still have flesh. Like... All you are is a slave to that flesh. Mm -hmm. You're always going to say, you're always going to be a victim. You're like, you can't overcome flesh. I know I can't overcome flesh, but I die. <laughs> and this new creation is no longer by himself, but he has the spirit within. Mm -hmm. And by the spirit, I can put to death the deeds of the flesh. So when somebody says to you or when you hear a message or a preaching and it's saying, come on, man, like, look at you. You're not in heaven yet. 
You're never going to be able to stop looking at porn. You're never going to be able to stop drinking and smoking. Like, you think you got enough power in you to just stop cussing when you've been cussing for 47 and a half years? Mm. Then you can just remember this. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body. Wow, so it's talking about the body. Yeah. It's not a sinful body. Uh -huh. Who wrote this Bible? Who wrote these scriptures? The Holy Spirit inspired them, right? Uh -huh. So when the Holy Spirit say, don't use your body for sin, if it's not possible, I don't understand. Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal body that you should obey in it in its lust. And do not present your members as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead. And your members as instruments of righteousness to God. So a lot of times we talk about, we have authority. Now we got authority. We got the power to heal the sick. And we can prophesy. And we can speak in tongues. And we can do so many things unbelievers can't do. Well, here is emphasizing the authority and the power we have to use this sinful body that was meant for sinful things for the complete opposite as an instrument of righteousness to glorify God and do his will and obey his word. That's crazy. That's a bigger miracle than I've ever seen. Mm. Like you something that's been sinful for thousands and thousands and thousands. I don't know, you know, depending on what you believe in the time frame, millions maybe since, since Adam and Eve, whatever it is, we'll, we'll know one day. It doesn't really matter. Right, the medicine that Christ came, we're redeeming yeah, it, right? Yeah, so yeah. this body that's been around for either thousands or millions, whatever, just to sin, just for sin. Nobody has had this body and not sin, right? right? Other than the one who is, right? God in the flesh, Christ. Right. Wow, you can actually make this body something that has never been for thousands, thousands of years, just like seeing the Holy Spirit. Duh, that's who created this body. Wow, amen. <laughs> like, that's who created the sun, the moon, and the stars. It comes in you. You think you don't have power over this thing? But there's the, I know there's the issue. It's not as easy as it sounds, right? This right here, man. Mm -hmm. This right here. That's why I want to ask you. How many of y'all read your Bible daily? And, you know, I'm not asking you to raise your hand or, or confess. Like, I'm not reading. I'm sorry. And that's, that's on you. Because I'm not going to be the one that has to deal with with that weight Come on now. Yeah. With the wrong okay. choices. You understand? Yeah. So we pay for what we're investing to. Yeah. We pay for what we're setting our minds on. Yeah. Or we enjoy and experience the reward of. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Let's come down. Where are we? 14. 14? Okay. Yeah. Can you, whenever I talk, and just remind me what we're saying. Thank you. So a lot of verses. For, <laughs> for sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Wow. That's crazy. So it's like grace means we sin and we're forgiven. No. Grace means the <laughs> grace means sin no longer has dominion over us. Why? Because grace means we now have the Holy Ghost. Yeah. That's the difference between the New Covenant and the Old yes. Covenant. Yeah. Not only that the sacrifices were animals before, and now it's Christ and He lives forever, so He no longer needs to sacrifice Himself, but also that we have the Spirit within, yeah. uh, and uh -huh. it changes everything. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's powerful. It's the Gospel. If the Gospel that you're hearing, that you're teaching, is not a Gospel of transformation, y'all, it ain't matching this. Yeah. On, if you're not man. believing the truth, then how can the truth set you free from your issues? Amen? Amen. Come on. Uh, where are we at? <laughs> All right. Do you not know, so 16, right? Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves? 15. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one slave yes. whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness? You guys, well, I don't know who was here, but when uh, we did the identity um, conference that weekend, do you guys remember me saying something like, we sing freedom, freedom, I'm free, I'm free, but that doesn't determine that you're free. What determines that you're free is what you're a slave to. Mm -hmm. It, it will reveal 
who you're a slave to is who you're living for, what you're serving. Mm -hmm. What or who are you obeying? So it's kind of like, it's, it's, it's exactly that. That's where I got that from. I wasn't just, I was just, just saying, I was just trying to sound like a preacher. <laughs> <laughs> I was quoting this because, man, like we gotta remember, Jesus is king, yeah. Lord, master. And in Galatians, Paul talks about being a slave of Christ or a bond servant of Christ, however you want to word it. Either way, it's basically, he wants you. He tells you what to do. You live for him. You live to please him. You live to obey him. Amen. You live to submit to him, regardless of what anybody else is saying, because a master is the one who has total ownership of its slave. Amen? Amen. Come on. So, see, it's, it's hard waking up and being like, well, I'm just going to watch TV. I'm just going to watch a movie. I'm just going to go hang out. I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to chill on Facebook. I'm going to do all these things. I don't know how Paul Marvin does it. I didn't think it was that loud. It was loud. I was trying to over, like, talk over it. I was like, I can't. I can't. I didn't drink enough on it. So, it's crazy when we, you know, it, it's, it's hard to think that in the morning or when we get off of work or off of school or whatever, when you constantly have it in your mindset, I'm a slave of God. I live for God. I live to do His will. I live to obey. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to live for yourself when you're constantly and ongoingly conscious of the fact that you belong to Him. Amen. For His glory. Amen? Our world is always at the six. But God, we're all 17? Yeah. Say what? I can't hear you. I hear a train. 17? Okay. But God, we think that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. All that's saying is, you guys are sinners, slaves of sinners, but you believe the gospel were born again, so you're no longer that. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. Now you're slaves of righteousness. See, we're always going to be a slave of something. Either sin or righteousness. Either the devil or God. Either the world or ourselves or Jesus. Holiness. Truth. Amen? <laughs> this is the thing. How many of you guys know that you could, you could be a slave of God, but God is so good that being a slave to him is free? Yes. Yep. Yep. Being a slave to God means freedom from sin, freedom from our past, yes. freedom from hell, Amen. freedom from sickness, Amen. freedom from depression, all those things. Mm -hmm. Being a slave of God protects you and keeps you free from the things that are not good for you. Mm -hmm. But being a slave of God keeps you living in the things that cannot hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. The truth can never hurt us. Right. Right? right? Love can never hurt us. Wisdom can never hurt us. Amen. Joy can never hurt us. Peace can never hurt us. Nothing of righteousness can hurt us. Everything in the gospel is, is for our well-being as well. It's for God's glory for our well-being. Amen? Amen. Yeah. All right, Rome was done. Verse 19, right? I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves, as slaves of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. <clears throat> righteousness is not only what you are, it leads to holiness. Holiness is always connected to conduct, mm -hmm. to what you do, what you manifest. Mm -hmm. Amen? So it says righteousness and fruit to holiness. Fruit. Fruit is seen. Right? Mm -hmm. um, go back to where it says for just as you presented your members. Do you guys see that it just doesn't say um, hey guys, you are just you are slaves now. You gotta worry about nothing. It says present yourselves. Uh -huh. There's a doing that we got to do. Uh -huh. Like, we got to present ourselves. Like, today, I am going to present my body as a slave or an instrument or a living sacrifice to God, just like Romans 12 says, right? Uh -huh. 
every day we got to present ourselves, bring ourselves to that place where we're submitting to God, resisting the devil, mm -hmm. right? Where we're putting our flesh under subjection and denying and stiff forming it, to rejecting the thoughts that match the flesh and accepting and embracing the thoughts that might match God's word. That's our everyday mission. Like, we can't get away from that. You know what I'm saying? Every day we have to present ourselves as instruments of righteousness, as slaves of righteousness. Amen? Where were we? 20? All right, we're almost done. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. Like, when you guys are just slaves of sin, just regular people, mere humans, with no Holy Spirit, with no word of God to look at, to learn from, to obey, with no God to answer to, you guys did not have to worry about righteousness. Like, <laughs> like I wasn't waking up before I was saved, like, let me make sure I make my decisions according to what's just and pure. Like, everybody in the opposite. Like, who am I going to be messing with today? Like, who am I going to get, you know, take advantage of today? What free stuff can I get today? What can I steal today? What, whose girl can I take today? You know, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, it was the opposite. So, like, we didn't have to worry about righteousness before. Then verse 21, what fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? And, and what did that bring about? Nothing good, mm -hmm. nothing you're proud of, nothing that you are happy that you did. At least I'm not. Everything I'm ashamed for. I'm, like, I'm ashamed of who I used to. I'm ashamed of the stuff I did. Amen? Amen? For the end of those things is death because Amen. it brought nothing to death. Amen. You know, and my testimony will tell you that. Like, I didn't make the right decisions. And what happened is obvious. Like, <laughs> it's obvious that it was... Not the good thing, not the good life to live, right? Nobody can get away from that. No drug dealer, no robber, no prostitute, no stripper, no no rapper that acts hard. Like <laughs> nobody can ever tell you, no football player that all he does is party and get chicks pregnant and all that. None of them can ever go to the end of their journey and tell you there's fruit. It was worth it. They're gonna tell you, man, I don't broke so many hearts. I done tried to like, kill myself four or five times. I did drugs. I was rich, but I was miserable. Everybody will tell you the same story. The drug dealers will tell you that you spent 20 years in prison. Damn, you don't even know your kids now. Strippers will tell you they got treated like trash. Yeah, they got iPhones and all that. There's no fruit. <laughs> it wasn't worth it. You know? It's sad. It's a sad thing. <laughs> But now, so this, here's the difference. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, so here's the difference. You have your fruit to what? Too long, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you, bro. Like, I can see you acting crazy. I just see you cut somebody out. I just seen you touch this lady, this waitress. I just saw you punch this dude that looked at you wrong. I see you. Uh -huh. Nick Acosta sees you. Do you think <laughs> I can see something or know something that God can't? <laughs> so the blood of Jesus makes God blind? No. The blood of Jesus makes God delusional and schizophrenic or something? No. Like if I can see your sin, God can see your sin. Yeah. If your wife knows you, you know, you watch your porn or something like that, God knows it. God ain't looking at you like, Hmm. Oh, I can't see that screen. It looks like my son's blood. He's just watching the blood. What? <laughs> That's not scripture. What scripture is that that blood is already presented on the mercy seat in God's real temple, which is in heaven, right? Because everything that we see in the Old Testament was a picture of what is real. Right spiritual in heaven so god's temple it says in hebrews is in heaven it's there in the blood of jesus that's why he had to ascend that's why he went up remember he told mary don't touch me i haven't ascended to the father yet right he has some blood to take up he took the blood put it on the mercy seat and he never has to sacrifice himself again right. that blood never has to be shed again it's in heaven nobody can touch you right right that's what it's saying as long as if you're there, if you're in that bar, 
and you're thinking God don't see me, he sees the blood, you're going to continue in that what? Slavery, bondage, walking according to the flesh, and according to Romans 8, 2, condemn. Mm-hmm. Condemn, guilty. You will pay for that. Mm-hmm. It's just to speak the truth. But if you remember John 1, and you remember or first John 1, and you remember that, okay, if you sin, you confess to the Father your sins, and he's faithful, and he's just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness because that blood's already there. All it's saying is accessible for you. If you need forgiveness, come and get it. Don't live like you have it no matter what you do because that's not here either. And that's what gets us in trouble. Not remembering like we are still supposed to be his slaves, his instruments, his sons, his daughters, not the world's. Because if we are, we're living in a mix up here and a little lump leaven. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. Right? Mm-hmm. Amen? Amen. All right. So hopefully that helps us for the rest of the week. It refuels us. Not with a not with a message, not with something entertaining, but it refuels us with conviction and with truth to remember that the goal here is to not only say I was set free in 2001 in my bedroom when I called on the Lord. The goal is to stay free. Yeah, that's right. Amen? Yeah. The goal yeah. is to stay free by, what's it said in Romans 8? I read it real quick. That was like the last thing I read. It said, those who walk in the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Those who walk in the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. So that should be a reminder like, damn, like, what am I thinking about? What am I, what am I looking at? What am I reading every day? What am I watching every day? We can't watch TV. We can't watch Netflix all day, every day. Right. Or hang out, go bowling, even if we're Christians. Listen, if y'all ain't talking about Jesus, y'all ain't talking about the word, y'all ain't talking about God's kingdom and spirit and doing kingdom things together, it's not fellowship. Mm-hmm. It's hanging out regardless of who's saying and all y'all say. You know, because you're not growing from that. You only grow from real fellowship. You only grow when you're talking about the word. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We can't hang out and all that, but it's just truth. Like, like listen, like I've been to Bible college. Like I got three degrees. I've seen people who go to Bible class every day. I've seen them and they leave their Bible class and they hang out and all they do is hang out and go to sleep like three in the morning. Like we used to do in jail. We used to play spades and poker all night. They do that in Bible college. The same concept, same living for self and then they wake up the next morning while oh, I book his lounge get the little pop tart and go to class let's learn about theology right and then there's no growth and it's sad because they're spending thousands of dollars and years of time right investing in the work of the Lord but they come out there not even a percentage but more mature Wow. They might learn how to stack chairs. They might learn how to follow the pastor. They might learn how to do an offering message. They might learn how to play the drums. But have they learned how to think like a Christian? How to live like a Christian? How to set their mind on the things that makes you a Christian? The spirit. That's the thing that we got to deal with. Because if it was hard for them and they couldn't do it because they hung out all the time, never read, never hung out with Christians who would speak about the Bible, who would remind you of the Bible, how much harder would it be for us? Because we go to Bible or most of us they go to Bible class every day and then hang it out. We go to work every day and then hang it out. We're going to school every day and hang it out. We're going to the daycare every day, whatever we're going. So <laughs> you know, there's there's something that I teach when 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 I'm when, um, when I teach identity, there's a, a curriculum that I'm I'm setting up just for the future. Um it's gonna be called two against one. You guys have any guess what that means? Two against one. Two against one always wins. The spirit of what? Spirit and soul against the blood. Say good. Maybe I should change the title. There's no there's no suspense. There's no reason. Everybody's gonna be like, oh I know what that is. So it's your spirit and your mind against the flesh. The flesh is always an enemy. The flesh is never going to go away until we have our redeemed or glorified or immortal or spiritual or celestial bodies. However you want to call it. The Bible calls it all. The mind and the Holy Spirit in you, who is now one with your spirit, 
against the flesh always wins. But the mind and the flesh teamed up against the spirit always wins too. So how are you teaming up? Who are you teaming up with? How are you living? What's your investment? What's your life like? What's your routines and habits like? What are you feeding on? That determines who's going to have the victory. Two against one always wins regardless of who teams up with who. The only thing we know is that the spirit and the flesh are always on opposite teams. That's crazy. Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for your word that is full of life and righteousness, that convicts, that corrects, that equips, that enables, and empowers. And we ask you, Father, remind us every day that we are no longer slaves of the world, of the devil, of this flesh, of this sin, but that we wake up every day as your sons and daughters to live for you, to offer ourselves as instruments for you. Play us however you want to play us. Use us how you want to use us. In righteousness and fruit to holiness and good works and the fruit of the Spirit that we may not have any law against us and be condemned, but live in the truth and walk in the light because we've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the Son of your love. God, we just thank you for grace to be holy as you are holy. We thank you for grace to obey your word. And we thank you that your word in our minds and your Holy Spirit that's already inside of our hearts will be enough to conquer and overcome the temptations of this flesh. And we thank you that when temptations, that when lies, when trickeries, when people, when cultures, when TV, newscasts, and news and Facebook articles come against the doctrine that's in this book, I thank you that you bring your scriptures to our remembrance yeah. so that we 